Are you wondering how to remove glue basted papers from your English paper piecing projects? Well, keep watching because in this video, I'm going to answer that question for you and give you my top tips. Hello and welcome to the Maker Jane channel where I share all things English paper piecing from tips and tutorials to projects and more. So if you love EPP like I do, please consider subscribing. My name is Janie and in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove your glue basted paper templates from your English paper piecing projects. I'll be explaining why you might want to consider removing your papers mid project, showing you which templates can and cannot be removed mid project, and showing you step by step exactly how you can remove your papers from your English paper piecing project without destroying the fabric or your quilt top. So first things first, let me introduce you to the project that I'm working on and I'm going to be using to demonstrate this video. So this project here on my design wall is my 2023 EPP temperature quilt and it is a work in progress. So I've got a section of fabric that has been English paper pieced together using half hexagons. There are templates still in this piece, sections of this piece. And then in these sections back here, these are actually strips of half hexagons that have been pieced together. And I am gonna be adding these strips to this larger chunk of fabric. As this project grows, it's going to become more and more large and more and more cumbersome to handle. And so this is why I thought it would be a good idea to shoot this video for you and show you how I'm going to be handling that. On a side note, if you're interested in making an English paper pieced temperature quilt, be sure to check out the link that I have for you down below in the description to a blog post that I wrote earlier this year, giving you the best practices for planning out a temperature quilt. There's also a link on that blog post that shares with you the ultimate temperature quilt starter kit that gives you all the tools and planning pages that you need to plan out and start making your own EPP temperature quilt. So be sure to check out the link down below in the description. So as I mentioned, my temperature quilt is a work in progress and it is starting to grow. I've got about five rows of hexagons here, and I'm about ready to add the next row of hexagons to the far right side here. So I'll be taking this row of hexagons and adding it to that far right hand side. But before I add that next row, I need to remove my papers because it's becoming more cumbersome and more difficult to hold as the project grows. So one perfect reason why you may want to consider removing your paper templates from a project that you're in the middle of is because the project is just becoming too unwieldy. And so remember that you can remove your paper templates to help reduce that unwieldiness. Not only does removing your papers make it easier for you to handle your project, but it also reduces the amount of space that's required to store your project. So if you don't have something like this, like a design wall to hang your project on when you're not using it, you may be folding it up or trying to fold it up and set it on a tabletop, or maybe you have a plastic container that you're trying to fit it into. Well, if you don't remove your papers as you go and as you're making your quilt top, the papers make your quilt top more stiff and harder to fold if you don't want to fold your papers a whole bunch of times. Uh, and it just creates kind of a big ball of mess that isn't very compact. And it also reduces the portability of your project. So if you're working on a large EPP project and you really want to retain the portability of it, then removing your papers is going to be key for that as well. So now that we've talked about why you might want to consider removing your papers mid project, let's talk about which papers you need to be removing and which papers you really need to leave in 
until the entire project is finished. And for that, we're gonna head over to the work table and take a closer look at my temperature quilt. So here is what the back of that larger section of temperature quilt looks like. And as you can see, I've got my papers marked. And if you're curious about that and you wanna learn more about how to make your own temperature quilt, I'll put a link up above in the cards here and you can check out the previous video that I made on how to plan and make your own EPP temperature quilt. And here is the next row of hexagons that I'm gonna be adding onto this larger piece. And the thing with hexagons and stitching rows of hexagons is you're constantly doing this flipping and flopping of your pieces every time you switch to a new seam. And if you'd like to see how I stitch rows of hexagons together and how I recommend doing it, I've got a video that I made on that specific topic that I'll put up here in the cards as well for you. So you can check that out. As you're adding your rows, you're constantly having to flip your row back and forth and you're having to maneuver your quilt top fabric. And it can become extremely cumbersome as you have more and more templates and especially as you're working with larger and larger piece of fabric. So what I'm gonna need to do is start removing some of these templates. And first, what we need to take note of is there are certain templates that you can remove and there are certain templates that you cannot remove or that you should not remove. Because I'm gonna be joining along this seam, a, a next row, I really want this outer edge to continue to remain rigid. And the only way that that is gonna stay rigid is if the papers stay in this section. So a good rule to remember is if you want to remove some papers and you're not quite sure which ones to remove, if you need to add more pieces to a particular side of your project, any papers that are along that edge need to stay in in order for that edge to remain rigid. Any papers that are not along this bare edge can be removed. So another way to think of it is any template that has been completely surrounded by fabric from another template can be removed. Any template that has not been completely surrounded on all sides by fabric from another template should not be removed if you want to retain that rigid edge. So with that knowledge, I'm going to point out the templates that can not be removed. And then I'll point out the templates that I'm going to remove. All of these templates here that basically have a bare edge or they have edges that are exposed and are not surrounded completely by fabric from another piece, all of these templates along this edge are gonna remain in. So that would include the template that's pointing this way and it would include both of these templates that are pointing this way because each of these has a side that's exposed and these templates here, which are positioned differently, have two sides exposed. The templates that will be removed are gonna be anything inside. So I'm gonna be removing this template because all four sides of it have been basted to another template. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this template because all four sides of it have been basted to another template. The same thing for this template and so on, continuing down this row. And then of course, anything inside of that, of course, has also been basted to other templates on all four sides. So those are gonna be the templates that I'll be removing. And again, the templates with anything that's exposed or is not basted to another shape, I will be leaving in. And so before I start showing you how to remove papers, I just wanna show you 
visually why I want to leave these outer papers in. So as I'm setting up this row to be added to my quilt top, I'm going to line up the seam that I want to stitch first, which is this seam here. I'm going to put my pieces face to face and you'll see that both of my pieces along that seam have papers in them. And that's exactly what I want because as I'm stitching English paper piecing, I want to have that rigid paper template in there that makes the stitching process easy. That's what makes English paper piecing English paper piecing is that you've got a paper in there that adds that, that, that creates that rigidity for your piecing process. If you remove these templates, these outer templates that haven't been stitched to anything yet, you would no longer be doing English paper piecing. In fact, you would just be hand piecing your quilt top together. And technically that's not English paper piecing because the whole point of English paper piecing is that you're using paper to piece your pieces. So let me show you now how to remove your glue basted paper templates from your EPP project. The first thing you want to do is identify which templates you're going to be removing. We've already discussed that. So I will be looking at these templates that have all four sides basted and anything inside of that. So these templates as well. So I'll just demonstrate using those templates. And remember these here on the outside, they're going to remain in. So I'm going to ignore those. So the next thing, after you've identified which templates you're going to be removing, you want to start gently pulling your seam allowance away from your paper. Work your way all the way around. And once you get all the way around, then you can slide your finger up underneath your paper template and it comes right out. It's really, really easy. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to this next one and just continue on in the same exact way. Now you may notice that some of your templates are kind of bent and maybe a little creased. That's not a problem at all. You can just take a warm, dry iron and press your templates so that they're flat again, and then you can reuse them. Not a problem. Uh, these are cardstock templates. I prefer to use cardstock, but you can probably get at least two uses out of paper templates made out of just plain printer paper. But cardstock usually lasts anywhere from four to five reuses. So you just continue along until you've removed all of the templates that you want removed for that part of your project. And one thing that I wanted to note and point out to you is you've probably noticed that my seam allowance is pulling away pretty easily from my paper templates. And I do have a little bit of a, a sticking issue here, which I'm going to discuss in just a second. But the ease of which your seam allowance pulls away from your paper is really determined by the type of glue that you're using. So I have tried two different types of glue for glue basting. And I have found, or I've noticed a difference. I have found that the fabric glue, which is the brand that I use is Soline, the Soline glue pen. And that's what I've used for this project. Uh, that glue pen tends to not stick as stiffly. So it lifts up very easily. I don't have a lot of fraying going on with my fabric. And it's just very, it's a very gentle glue when you're working with fabrics and paper. I have, on the other hand, tried school glue. School glue does tend to be a much stronger glue stick, glue pen. And so I have found when using that, that when I go to peel back my seam allowances, 
they are very firmly stuck to the paper. And sometimes they're so stuck that the edge of my fabric will really start to fray and I'll have to be very careful to pull that back. Another thing I've noticed is sometimes it will actually be so stuck that it starts tearing at the paper template. So because of that, I now only glue based with the sew line glue pen. And just to show you what that looks like, this is the sew line glue pen. This is what I recommend for glue basting. I really hesitate to recommend school glue because it does have such a strong hold. But of course, as always, I always suggest that you do your own experiments and figure out what works best for you. I know that school glue is a lot less expensive than the sew line glue pens. And some of us just don't have the budget for the extra notions. So I totally get it and that's no big deal but I do wanna encourage you to try both and see which one you like better. If you are interested in the Soline glue pen, I've got a link for you down below in the description where I have found the lowest price that I can possibly find anywhere on the internet. And I've got that down in the description for you below. So if you're in the market for Soline glue pen, be sure to check out that link. So I'm gonna continue on and I wanted to show you or come back to a piece that was kind of getting stuck when I was trying to pull the paper out. But before I do that, I'm coming up across a piece here where you can see my fabric is starting to fray. So here's an example of what happens when your fabric starts to fray as you're pulling your seam allowances away from your paper. And even with the sew line glue pen, as you can see, your seam allowances may sometimes do this. You want to be extra careful. As soon as you see this fray, see how it almost looks like it's cut? As soon as you see that, you want to stop pulling and you want to start coming at it from a different angle. So instead of pulling on this piece that I've already pulled up, I like to come down, back down to the paper and kind of scrape that lower section of fabric up as well before it rips any farther. So even though I used the Soline glue pen, and it, as you can see, it's, it wasn't stuck that hard, but because I'm not working on grain with all of my fabrics, I'm just kind of cutting it as it goes. And then of course, as we're working with these different shapes, um, not all the edges are on grain. So depending on the angle of your grain, as you pull, you may be pulling against the grain and that could also cause fraying. So just keep in mind, as you're moving along, you just wanna be gentle as you're pulling your work and keep an eye on what your fabric is doing. And as soon as you see any fraying like that, pause what you're doing, reposition your hand and continue on. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this template out. And I've got, it's not lifting out very easily. As you can see, I've got my finger underneath it and I'm kind of pulling up and it, it's just kind of stuck. So I wanna share with you a couple tips for how to remove your papers if you find that you have stitched through the edge of it like I have here. So before you just yank this out, you wanna be cautious because you have spent a lot of time and energy stitching, hand stitching your, your piece, your quilt top together. And so what I recommend doing is before you just pull this out, you want to secure these stitches with your, with your other hand. So I'm just putting my hand underneath along that seam line and I'm using my middle finger on the bottom and I'm gonna join that with my thumb on the top. And I'm gonna press firmly between those fingers. I'm gonna come in with my left hand and I'm gonna gently tug on my paper. And you can see that it tore the paper, which is exactly what I wanted, you don't want to tear your threads. You don't want to break your threads. And that's why you want to reinforce your threads with a little bit of pressure from underneath and from above with one of your hands before you pull your paper out. So I've got the same problem in this far area, farther area back here. And it looks like it's right in that corner. So for this, I'm gonna to have to come up underneath all of this fabric and that's 
fine. I'm just going to kind of bunch it up underneath so that I can get my hand underneath and above it. I'm going to use my left hand as pressure now and I'm going to pull with my right hand. And there's another little spot here. And there we go. So you just want to make sure you're not pulling your stitches out. And again, it's okay if you got little holes or little frays in the edge of your template, you can still reuse your templates a few times. I have reused templates like this and they don't seem to make much of a difference. If you notice that they're starting to get really soft along the edges and maybe create distortion in the actual edge of your shape, maybe it's starting to curve instead of be a straight edge, then you may wanna consider replacing your templates. The last tip that I wanted to share with you is if you find that your uh, seam allowances are fraying quite badly and you really just don't want to pull on your seams at all, I have found that using a plastic tool with a little bit of a beveled edge can be another great option. So I've got a few tools here that I wanted to demonstrate this on, that I wanted to demonstrate this for you with. This first tool is a plastic uh, pottery tool that I got at a local craft store. And basically it's just a plastic beveled edge. So it's really thin on one edge and then the, the outer edge is thicker and rounder. And you'd wanna use the thinner edge and get up underneath your fabric. I already did that side. And once it's underneath your fabric, then you can just simply kind of slide it along and lift, gently lift your fabric as you go. And this is another great alternative if you find that pulling on your seam allowances just isn't working. A similar tool, if you don't have something like that, if you have a cutting machine, there's a couple tools that came with my cutting machine that would be uh, great tools for this as well. So let me show you those real quick. I'll pull this out. So this next one is the tool that's used to lift up like um, sticker or vinyl material from my cutting mat on my Silhouette Cameo. So I don't hardly ever use, use this tool because I don't usually use that material. I'm usually cutting cardstock for English paper piecing. But this basically has the same type of beveled edge to it, although it's much smaller. But you can do um, more detailed work with this. And actually this kind of works a little bit better because it is more focused and you can just lift up one little spot at a time. And that's actually working really, really well. So here's a little spot that's kind of stuck. So I'm just going to kind of work it gently. And as you push in, you can kind of peel back a little bit. And you, no matter which tool you're using, even if you're just using your fingers to peel your fabric, just remember you want to be gentle and you want to take your time with this. The third tool that also came with my Silhouette Cameo is this um, scraper, you can use it as a scraper or you can use it as a, uh, like a burnishing tool to help, you know, seal down certain materials. So I'm going to try this. I actually haven't tried this before. It is a little bit wide, I think, for this application, but the concept is the same. It's got kind of a beveled edge to it. You can see where it's skinnier along this edge. And I'm just going to use the corner and just kind of slide it up underneath the fabric as I go along. And you can see, so I'm not even pulling on my fabric at all. So this is another great tool. It's not gonna create any fraying of your fabric uh, or minimal fraying, if any at all, because there is a little bit of areas where you need to kind of pull or uh, pull up on it just a little bit. But for the most part, it works wonderfully. So those are just a few tools that can be helpful at removing your papers if you find that your seam allowances are fraying quite badly. If you find that your seam allowances are just being super stubborn, you may actually need to use both a tool and your hands. 
and just gently work that fabric away from that paper. Usually, most seams aren't this difficult, but every now and then I have a tendency to lay down a little bit of extra glue that probably didn't need to be put down. And um, that can also cause a little bit of extra sticking in some, some areas. So just take your time with it, be gentle. And as with all things English paper piecing, enjoy the process. I hope this video was helpful for you in showing you just how easy it is to remove your glue-basted paper templates from your EPP projects. With some patience and a gentle hand, you'll be able to get your papers out without any damage to your quilt top. Remember, if you're interested in making your own EPP temperature quilt, be sure to visit the link down below in the description where you can read more about how to plan your own EPP temperature quilt and get that free Ultimate EPP Temperature Quilt Starter Kit. I'll see you in a couple weeks for the next video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell so that you can get notified on when I post the future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Until then, happy stitching.